More breaking news today. Adam, the Broncos fired their head coach, Nathaniel Hackett. Susie, zero surprise here. I think the surprise was that it came with two games left in the regular season when people thought that the new Broncos ownership group would wait until the end of the year. But this franchise is on a pace for a record low number of points. And then yesterday, there was fighting on the bench between Dalton Reisner and their backup quarterback, Britt Rippon. There was an incident after the game in which Randy Gregory threw a punch and wound up getting suspended for a game. This team has embarrassed itself on the field. It has embarrassed itself off the field. It was going to make a head coaching change. Let's keep in mind, the owners bought this team this summer. They did not hire no. Nathaniel Hackett. They had no obligation. And to write him a check to send him away, what does that mean to them? It means nothing. There's no cap ramifications. And so they can do that now. There are other problems and issues that they need to address. <laughs> but the coaching one is one that it has begun to clean up. I mean, the quarterback. is that... <laughs> that, That's one of the ones that's out there that they have to figure out. They but, need to get a coach in there that's going to elevate his level of play. So let's start with Steve here. Steve, what do you believe this is accomplishing now with two weeks left to go, especially for the locker room? We well, saw Coach Hackett had lost the locker room. We talk about this all the time, and Bug and Robert know this as well. You lose the locker room, it's over. So he lost the locker room, and he's so new. We don't know whether he's going to be a great coach or not. There's not enough time. But we know that the coach and the quarterback are going to have to own a season like this. Well, they can't have the quarterback own it because Adam just told you they can't. Russell's not going anywhere. So Nathaniel Hackett takes the hit. But Russell, come on. This is 2022 is the year where the game has come to Russell Wilson if ever has. Mobile quarterbacks that can take all those yards, get out of the pocket, do all those things he's done for 10 years as an all-pro player, maybe a Hall of Fame player. Where is that over 15 games? You have not sent up a flare, not one flare in 15 weeks that you know anything about your previous history. Mm. Now, I understand maybe it's bad offense. Maybe it's a bad uh, offensive line. Maybe you don't have the weapons. I don't think any of those are true. In the end, Coach Hackett's gone. But mm. Russell Wilson, at some point, you need to let us know that you're still you that you can still be a decent or above average football player in the NFL. And that's why the most shocking thing in the NFL this year, come to me, is the play of Russell Wilson. It makes no sense to me. You know, I, I, I think Nathaniel Hackett had to go. I, I think the head coach sets the culture in the locker room. I played for Tony Dungy. He had one sign on the wall, no excuses, no explanations. That set the culture in our locker room. What was the culture in Denver? I, I think we saw it on display yesterday on the sideline and, and I think when you're an offensive head coach or when you're a particular head coach on a particular side of the ball that side of the ball better be good I mean the Broncos were last in points per game last on third down they scored 16 points or less in 11 out of 15 games and that's for an offensive head coach who's supposed to play offense in a game now in 2022 yeah, that's wide open I'm with you, and you know it's what's amazing open. about this is that we live uh, in a day and age where there's a lot of yelling a lot of screaming a lot of criticizing there has not been a coach that lost a fan base and quicker. his players quicker, quicker. Yes. than Nathaniel Hackett yes. did. He was done after the first game of the season Seattle. when he waffled on those decisions yeah. and had to bring in Jerry Rosberg as his time management specialist, who now takes over as the interim head coach in the second week of the season. From that point on, Broncos fans wanted him gone. He never gave them a reason to keep him. You kept waiting for this yeah. to be turned around, yeah. and it never did. And he lost the fans, and I would imagine some of the organization after week one. Yeah, I, I would say that this this failed season isn't all on Nathaniel Hackett. But to your point, there was no one that was going to take the axe aside from him because you got the quarterback that you paid so much money to. I just think they underestimated how difficult it is to come in with a new head coach, new offensive coordinator, a new quarterback with young offensive weapons. New and, owners. And new owners and go out there and be successful right away. They had too much new new in, in Denver for it to work out that way. But Hackett, the thing that is on him is the, what you mentioned, Bo. Yeah. The fact that the offense was so bad and he couldn't get Russell Wilson in rhythm. For whatever reason, the way that Russell sees the game and how he's been successful over the 10 years, the first 10 years of his career, is not what Nathaniel Hackett needs out of the quarterback position. You could argue that the offense looked better with Ripien in the game than it did with Russell Wilson, for whatever reason. So now whoever they bring in mm -hmm. has to be someone that's going to get the most out of Russell Wilson, and that's why I think they should try to go get Sean. Now, Pitt. that's why I'm going to disagree with you a little bit, because I, I don't think the new coach 
has to say, you know what, my only job is to fix Russell Wilson. What if Russell Wilson can't be fixed? And so, so I don't want me, as, as far as an owner, to go out and say, I have to find a coach that can fix, fi fix this quarterback. Oh, because Russell Wilson played bad. And I guarantee you, if the money wasn't tied to him the way it is, because they can't get rid of him. But it is. And they give it to Russell Wilson if they could, too, now. But it but is. But it is. is. To your but point, it, it is. is. And that's why you that. have to go get the coach that's going to not fix Russell Wilson, but allow Russell Wilson to be the player that he's now, been the past 10 years. You, you have, you he's not a rhythm and timing quarterback, guys. But now you may be limiting the, your candidates because what if I'm a candidate no. that's a good coach, hey. and what if I don't want Russell Wilson as my quarterback? That's not an option. Hey, listen, you have to you're worry trying about to that. get a coach. That's done. Uh, <laughs> You're trying to get a coach who, on the one hand, can fix Russell Wilson, yes. and if he can't, is still going to be somebody you want leading your organization forward. Yeah. So a great coach is a great coach. You hope and think that he can correct some of these issues that have risen up this year, but if he can't, then you go on yeah. and you basically make the team work and the offense work with the next quarterback. That's what Steve uh, Adam, Come on. Come here, Steve. Come on. In the end, it's not – a problem with whoever coach you pick. Hopefully it's an offensive-minded, innovative head coach. Sean Payton, for example, or you. there's Thank young you. ones out there. Go get, go get someone who can be innovative. In the end, it's a Russell Wilson problem that only Russell Wilson can fix. Yes. It's not someone coming in to run an offense. That run. Uh, Russell Wilson's played long enough. He is a veteran, all-pro player, maybe Hall of Fame player. Like, he needs to fix himself, and whatever comes, this game is for him. The today's game is for him. doesn't matter what the offense is. He has a way and the experience to figure out some way to be productive. This is about Russell Wilson fixing Russell Wilson, not about a, a head coach that come in and can sing to him. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.